in uh, August of 1969, I got a call uh, to do a record, my very first record date with Miles Davis. And, you know, I went into the studio with all of these fantastic, great musicians who I had been listening to on records. So this was a game-changing moment for me to, to be able to play with all these guys that I had been listening to, especially with the, the master, Miles Davis. We didn't want to play with Miles Davis. We wanted to be Miles Davis. You know? So I get an opportunity to play with him, and we make this record called Bitches Brew. This was August, and I went up. To, I was going to college at the time, and you know, I went back to school. And people, what, what are you doing here, man? You know, you record, you know, and the, you know, it was just a mellow time and everything. In October of the same year, out of a dead sleep, I woke up and said, I recorded with Miles Davis. At that point, I realized that. I had recorded with Miles Davis, and that it was history because now everybody after 1969 will be able to go to that particular event and say he was part of that event. And it took three months, four months for me to realize that. And in the moment, you're just there and you're making it happen. You don't know. But then later on, I, man, I played with Miles Davis. So this is now 1970. We made the record in August of 1969. And I was going to uh, New York Institute of Technology. I left school and went on the road with Buddy Montgomery, who was Wes Montgomery's brother. And we, uh, my, I told my parents that I was leaving college, and, I'm go and they said, if you leave, you're on your own. You know, I said, OK. But this is my first opportunity to go to California, and I had never been to California before, and I said, okay, I gotta do this. So I left school and went on the road with Buddy, and we got to Vancouver. So we get to um, um, the gig, and there's a newspaper strike. So there's nobody in the club because you can't advertise. This is Vancouver. So we didn't, get any, we didn't get paid, so we had to sneak out of the hotel. We snuck out of the hotel. And then we're driving now from Vancouver down to San Francisco because uh, Buddy has a friend that we can stay with because we have no money, I mean, but so, yeah. So um, I'm in San Francisco, and on uh, Geary Street, there's a record store. And it's about 6 o'clock, so the record store's getting ready to close. But in the window, it says, new Miles Davis album. So I knock on the window, and I see the guy in the back, and I say, and I'm talking to him through the glass. And I said, please, can I see the Miles Davis album cover? Because I'm on it. It's my first time being on a record. So the guy goes, OK. So he goes, and he holds up the album cover through the glass, and I look at the album, it's still one of the greatest album covers I've ever seen in my life. And I said, can you turn it around? Because you know I've never seen my name on an album cover. If you look at that album cover and look at the names, it says Miles Davis trumpet, Wayne Shorter saxophone, Lenny White drums. I'm the third name there, and like, I cannot begin to tell you the feeling that I got when I saw that, because this, this was it. I made it. I finally am on an album, and my name is on the album. And the, that was a big game-changing moment for me.